Hey, welcome back, everybody. I'm what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the palette that I'm going to be giving you and uh, how we're going to start these first projects in watercolor. Watercolor is pretty old. Um, a lot of times, uh, the Renaissance artists, even back in the 1400s, 1500s, uh, they would uh, make watercolor paintings, watercolor sketches before their final project that they might be doing in oils or uh, egg tempera. So uh, up until really probably about the, the 1800s or so, watercolor wasn't really accepted as a finished product, but now um, watercolor is just as valid as, as oils and acrylics and uh, gouache and things like that. So what I want to show you here is uh, um, what I'm going to be giving you. And that is a little plastic palette. It's going to have a little plastic cover on it. And it looks kind of messy, um, but really this is this is typical of anybody's watercolor palette. It's a pretty limited palette. Um, you don't need a lot of colors because I want you to learn how to mix colors. So these colors uh, are a little bit different than pan colors, and pan colors like something like this. Um, these these paints are probably 20 or 30 years old. Um, if you go into Mrs. Rossiter's room, she has some black uh, pans that are from Prang that are probably when I was in high school in the uh, 70s and 80s. So uh, they last for a long, long time. These are pans because they're pre-made and they're filled up and they, this, is, this is kind of, you can see, it's pretty well filled and hasn't been used at all. The blue has been used quite a bit. Um, it looks like this is about done, but this, is, this has got lots of paintings left in it because watercolor goes a long, long way. Um, Prang and, and Crayola watercolor are pretty good that you can get at Walmart or um, Hobby Lobby. But then there's another step up after that. So um, just because they're pans don't mean they're, doesn't mean that they are uh, not good kind of watercolors. Prang and Crayola are okay, but they're not high-end kind of paints. But you can get high-end pans um, from different kind of manufacturers. And so it kind of just depends upon how much pigment is, is there, how concentrated it is, and how pure is it. Is this a pure red, or is this a, it's got a little more purple in it, or a little bit more yellow in it. Um, is the blue blue, or is the blue kind of going one direction or another, whether it's getting warmer or cooler, and we'll talk more about that. Anyway, what we're going to do here, though, is we have um, our palette, and I want, and I'm going to have it set up for you because I need it to dry. Um, these are... Uh, tube paints and they come in little tubes like this they're wet but a lot of people don't understand that they don't want to use them wet um, there may be a few instances where you're going to do something more experimental but uh, just traditional kind of watercolor you're going to want to um, pour this out and let it dry so these are all dry um, they've been sitting here and we want to be able to add the amount of water that we want to put on and so here they're already wet they get too powerful and and then it uh, just doesn't work so when you want something subtle um and i i'm going to arrange it in a specific way so that you know what's going on as well so sometimes though your paints will get this way and let me uh, let me address that to begin with you know you got done with painting um one day maybe you had to leave real quick um and now they're kind of dry like this so what i'm going to do take my water here and I can just wet, re wet it. So, um, the good thing about watercolor is it's, uh, it can be re wet. Sometimes the bad thing about watercolor is that it uh, can be re wet too. So, you know, you uh, can't, uh, can't get it wet once you're done with the painting because it will, it will reactivate and, and smear. So, you gotta be careful. Um, acrylic is it's just basically an acrylic polymer. And when it's dry, it's pretty dry and it can endure some wetness. The same thing with oils. So you don't want to use your good brush for a scrub brush, but I'm not. I'm pressing pretty lightly. I'm just getting this wet again. And then I can take a dry paper towel and I can just wipe this out. So that's, that's typical what's going to happen is you're going to want to mix some colors over here, mix some colors over here, try some things out. But then you're probably going to want to wash it out eventually. It doesn't have to be crystal clean like this. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do anything about this orange at all that's in the yellow. Um, that's, that's so minuscule. And once I start mixing the, the yellow, um, that's not going to go away. Let me just show you my palette um, that I use. 
And it's a uh, zoom out here. Oh, maybe I can't get out far enough. Here. It's really bigger. Um, I've got a lot of different other different colors, but it's really most of the time I'm still using probably five or six colors. Um, I've got a nice big area here to to mix my paints, and then I could just take a sponge and wash it out. So I have a, another one. It's a butcher block or a butcher pan, um, just like you might go to Campbell's and see them have a hamburger in. Something like that. Uh, and it's nice because it's porcelain and it mixes as well. So anyway, um, well, so here's the basic color. So we can make almost every color out of basically three colors. So and you've all talked about this probably in elementary school. You have the primary colors of red, yellow, and blue. Um, but you notice I have two different colors of red. And one red is called a cool red. This is called a lizarin crimson. If you ever watch Bob Ross, he uses the lizarin crimson. Um, a lizarin crimson is a little more, maybe hopefully this will translate well, this is a little more on the purple side. It's a pretty pure red, but it's called a, it's called a cool red. And in this case, it looks kind of pink. Then I have a warm red, and a warm red um, goes a little bit toward the orange side. This is called a cadmium red. Now, cadmium is uh, there is some health concerns for all these paints. You're not going to obviously eat them or anything. Um, cadmium is a metal, um, and it's a heavier metal, and so you don't want to eat this. You want to always just be careful with uh, cleaning your hands and cleaning your brushes and not drinking out of the same brush. But this is, if you can see that, that's a lot more. Closer, that's a lot closer to orange than it is to purple. And this one is a little more closer closer to purple. And so they make different colors um, using a warm or cool. So a lot of times when we're talking about warm and cool, a cool color tends to recede. So when we're doing landscapes, we want nice cool, more on the blue sides of uh, the color palette and then as things come closer we're going to get them warmer they're going to tend to come forward then and that's a little bit more on the uh on the on the reds and orange side so just like just think about it as as what color would you choose if you're going to advertise ice well you're not usually going to advertise ice with the color red but you would with blue and if you're going to think hot uh, maybe hot spicy mexican food um, you would use red and not blues. So we have lizard and crimson, and so we're gonna what we're gonna do is kind of work our way around here, then cooler colors and warmer colors, and they kind of kind of meet, and then I'll tell you about those. And we have some neutral colors here. But so we have lizard and crimson, which is a cool red. This is more of that pink. We have cadmium red, which is a little more orange. Then we have um, this is a this is a uh, cadmium yellow and it's a little more orangey looks like a pretty standard kind of yellow but then we have a lemon yellow and the lemon yellow is closer to that greenish color this is this tends to favor the oranges this tends to favor the green. Now this is going to be a little harder to see. There's not quite as much difference. And the light's kind of hitting it kind of weird. So, um, but not necessarily lighter, but a little bit more on the green side. Then let's go over to the blues here. We have ultramarine blue. And ultramarine blue is a little more on the purple side. It's a pretty pure kind of blue. Um, this is probably one that you use really the most, um, but you can see, and as it dries, we'll be able to see a little bit better, um, kind of on the purple side. Then, this one is phthalo blue, and phthalo blue is a kind of a more bright, um, getting kind of turquoise, and turquoise is a fancy name for kind of blue-green. see. Yeah, let's zoom in. Uh, 
think you can see that. That's, this looks a little more purple next to this. Now, you would have said it was blue if I didn't show you those. You would have said red, yellow, and blue. And this one, you would have said red, yellow, and blue. But now when you put them, compare them, this looks more orange. This is a little more orange. Um, and this is a little more green. It's obviously not a not a uh, as, as purple as this. Uh, this almost looks purple compared to this um, when you compare them. So uh, that's where artists just have to experiment what color makes skin tones or what color makes the, the best green grass. Um, I do have uh, some green here that I don't really want to probably not going to give you that initially. Maybe I'll give the remote students that so they have it, but I'm not really looking for you to use that green. Let's get back down here so we can see it. Um, do this. Okay, so then hardly ever, ever, ever are we going to use black. But I'm giving you black. So black is right beside the phthalo blue. So you're going to need to know this because I'm going to be not pointing at it necessarily when I do my, my presentations. I'm going to say we're going to use ultramarine or we're going to use phthalo or whatever. But then we have black. And so depending on how much water I put on there, you know, is, is how dark and how um, trans or how transparent it is. So how opaque. Opaque means that you can't see through it like this table is opaque. And a window is transparent. Let me just, while well, I got this black out, I'll demonstrate. So this, you know, this can get a nice big wide brush stroke, but I can also do a really thin line with this brush, the, the more straight up and down that I hold it. Okay, so pretty versatile brush. I do have this green. Um, I may have, I'm not sure which one I have there. It's, uh, some of, sometimes it's called Viridian Green. Sometimes it's uh, called uh, uh, Leaf Green. And sometimes it's Permanent Green. Uh, that's just a kind of standard green. But let me, let me show you while we're in that green, how we can get different kind of greens depending on what color blue we're using. So I'm gonna take a little bit of Stalo Blue. Since that's a cool blue, and I'll get a little bit of Lemon Yellow. Since that's a cool yellow, and we'll mix it. And I'd say that's a little bit more of a uh, regular green. This is more on the yellow side. This is more of a straight up kind of green. But let me show you the same thing with ultramarine, which is a very purplish color, and then. And lemon yellow. This is a little bit more like a darker green. Um, sometimes uh, that green is called a hooker's green. So here we got three different colors of green based upon which kind of color blue we have. Um, now if we went the other way, we did, uh, I don't know if it's gonna be a huge difference, but we'll do the ultramarine and then we'll lose the cadmium. Those two are pretty similar. Let's say it's a little more gray down. So and that's why we're doing this, but we can make every other color here. We can make the purples, we can make the oranges, um, and you just have to try different kinds of uh, mixtures of whether it's a warm color or a cool color. So we have, um, Blizzard and Crimson, we have ultramarine blue, sometimes it's called French ultramarine. We have phthalo, we have black, we have this meridian green or, or uh, leaf green. And then we have um, some kind of more neutrals here. This is um, a good standard brown. It's kind of hard to make brown sometimes. And so this is a burnt umber. And so there's a bunch of different colors of, of brown. The, the most... Uh, popular is burnt umber, burnt sienna, raw sienna, and raw umber. Um, but this really makes a, a good color when we mix um, 
uh, blues or anything with it if we want to darken the color. So we don't want to use black because black really just dulls the whole color. It, it really makes it kind of muddy and dull. Even though this is brown, we use the term muddy in watercolor where uh, it, it just dulls the color. So ultra, or this, uh, this burnt umber is a really nice color, especially when mixed with ultramarine blue. It'll darken it without making it drab. And so depending on how much paint you put in here, you, know, you can darken that blue so I get this nice, almost black color, but it's a much richer color than the pure black. So we can use this uh, this burn, burn umber in you know mixing any kind of colors and we just get a deeper color. I'm gonna just do that real fast here right now. I'm talking a bunch here. But I just do that with a, a loser and crimson and we'll move. So let me show you I forgot the room up here. Now that's a deeper purple and when it dries you'll be able to see a little bit better. Um, that actually is a pretty decent um, flesh color if we really lighten it. So I'm going to add a little water to it. And that kind of has a fleshy pink, more of a Caucasian um, flesh color. Maybe add a little bit of yellow into that as well. But, um, as that dries, you'll be able to notice it. Then the last one, um, and it's not necessary, not really necessary, but uh, I think it just makes things a little simpler, is uh, a yellow ochre. And ochre is O-C-H-R-E. Um, and it's just a kind of a rich yellow. You might want to use it when you're mixing um, oranges, too. It's actually got a little bit of brown in it. It's a little more of a muddy, kind of mustardy kind of yellow. So, but with those colors right there, you can make everything, okay? So again, as we clean that, clean that up, it's a little bit easier sometimes when it's still wet and you're done. But a lot of times I'll just let it dry because, hey, I've already mixed that color. I might need it later on, but I'm, I'm just gonna stop for the moment. Um, I'm just gonna leave it there and I can re-wet it and I already have that same mixture. So not a real need for uh, covering them all the time. Sometimes, however, though, they'll start to get kind of crack, um, maybe get a little too dry. So um, if I know I'm going to have some really bold colors, I need some really super bold colors that day, I'm going to come by and I'm just going to drip um, a couple of drops of water on there, maybe a half an hour ahead of time so that it starts to kind of wet that a little bit so it's a little easier to use. But uh, a lot of times I just use it straight up dry. So that's the palette. Um, so we've got warm colors, cool colors. You have to experiment um, to how to make those particular kind of greens or purples, what makes the best um, color. So we're going to do some experimenting, but that's what that is. So hopefully uh, you have uh, a good time with that. And the whole idea of this is that you have to experiment. You just plain have to experiment. There is no substitute. I can't show you um, everything. You just have to experiment um, with your own colors and see what's what's what. Um, there is a definite, you know, as we, as we go along, there is definite a difference in kind of the quality of paints, um, whether it's student grade or whether it's professional grade. Sometimes it gets really expensive, uh, maybe a little tube like this. Uh, might cost you almost $20 uh, for a good tube. But this will almost last you, unless you're painting like every day, a professional artist all the time, that could last you your entire lifetime. Um, this goes a long, long way. So don't take this whole palette and put it underneath the water spigot because you'll wash half of the paint away. Um, just get the paintbrush and get that paper towel and just dab it away, clean it up, um, and it'll last for a long, long, long time. So, all right, I'm excited to see what kind of uh, paintings you come up with. And uh, the next one, I'll be demonstrating the first assignment.